Hello Hope Church, uh, it's great to see you and in case you've lost track of time it's Tuesday evening so welcome to Life Groups online and uh, we hope you're having a good week so far and enjoying the weather and you've been blessed and had a great Easter and celebrated the Saviour with us. Um, we're back in our series on Psalms called Sila. Um, stop and think about this or stop and consider this and uh, Claire done a great job with Psalm 4 last week and, and spoke a great word to us. And so this week we're in Psalm 5 and I just want to jump straight into it. Um, as always, I'm going to assume you've read it for yourself or you're going to read it. And so I'm just going to pull out some thoughts as I go through, okay? Um, I want to talk to you <coughs> from Psalm 5 about fear and favour. Fear and favour. Now this psalm is a psalm of David. Uh, we don't know at what point in his life it was written, we, that is unknown, but we do know that uh, it was written during the time that he had many enemies that were rising up against him and so he was seeking God to help him and deliver him and protect him. Um, uh, people call this the, the morning psalm or the morning prayer or the morning song um, because of verse 3 um, and it says this, it says, In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait in expectation. So from that verse, it's known as the morning song. But I like that, that bit at the end, and I wait in expectation. You know, I think there's two ways to pray. You can pray in unbelief, which means you go through the motions, uh, you do your due diligence, you do your duty, but you really have no sense of God answering your prayer. You're kind of indifferent. You've just done what you feel you needed to do and uh, you've kind of been religious about it you've just gone through the motions and you do it out of a sense of duty and guilt and tradition and so you pray but you don't really believe that anything's going to happen you just you've just done it because that's what you do um that's the one type of prayer that people can pray and um, the other type of prayer which is what david prayed was the prayer of faith where it says he waited in expectation that word expectation means to look out and to watch so in other words he was looking all around looking looking out and watching to see the answer to his prayers. He cried out to the Lord, he brought his request, and then he looked for God to answer them. There was this sense of expectation, there was this sense of faith. He knew that God answered the prayer, that God could do the miraculous, God could do the impossible, and that God listened to his prayers and his requests. He had access to God. There was that sense of confidence and expectation. So I just wondered, how do you pray? Do you pray and then forget what you've prayed and don't really think about it? Or do you pray and wait in expectation, wait patiently for the Lord? So that's just a thought, that's all I want to encourage you with. Let's pray in faith, believing that God answers prayer. Um, two thoughts I, I want to kind of bring to you um, is, first of all, from verse 7, where it talks about, it says, But I, by your great mercy, will come into your house. In reverence will I bow down towards your holy temple. Um, other versions say, in fear of you. I will worship towards your holy temple. <clears throat> we don't hear many sermons today about the fear of the Lord. Um, at least I don't anyway. And we don't hear many people talking about the fear of the Lord. Um, we hear a lot of people talking about fear to, to do with COVID-19 and the situation we're in. And um, the sense of dread and anxiety that is causing them. But the fear of the Lord is not that kind of fear. It's not the fear of dread and anxiety that we're experiencing sin now or people are experiencing the world right now it's a different kind of fear the fear of the lord is a reverence a respect and an awe for god it's not being afraid of god as some tyrant or ogre who wants to hurt us who wants to inflict punishment on us it's not fearing him in the sense that we fear COVID 19 because it's going to harm us and possibly kill us it's fear in the sense of knowing who god is and keeping him in his rightful place it's remembering that god became a man and loved us so much that he gave his life for us and so we can relate to him, we can come before him with confidence and uh, and with boldness. But it's also remembering that he's not only a man, but he's also divine, that he is holy, that he is righteous, that he is almighty, that he is awesome. That's what that word means, to, to have reverence and awe for God and remembering who he is. Sometimes I think we can be over familiar with God. Yeah, he is a friend of sinners and we can come close to him, and he loves us and he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He, nothing will separate us from the love of God. So we don't have to be scared of him. But at the same time, we have to be careful that we don't disrespect God. That we don't 
um, be over familiar with him in the language that we use towards him or the way we live or the way we act our attitudes but we should remember that who God is he is the great I am the creator of the universe he is the one who dwells in um, in holiness and glory and who is perfect in all his ways you know when angels appear to people in the Bible they fell down in fear of them well can you imagine what we what it would be like for God to appear to us if people fell as though they were dead men in fear and trembling then imagine if God manifests himself and we know that in Revelation chapter 1 he appeared to John and John fell as a dead man before him it says Jesus the Alpha and Omega appeared to him in glory and so we have to remember that this Jesus that we love and serve who's a friend of sinners and comes close to us is also Almighty God and we should fear him and walk in the fear of the Lord reverence and respect for God and keep him in awe Hebrews 12 and verse 20 to 29 which I want to read to you is a great description of what it means uh, to walk in the fear of the Lord and to worship God in the fear of the Lord it says this it says this Hebrews 12 28 to 29 therefore since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire let's worship God acceptably acceptably and then he tells us how that is what what is acceptable to God it's with reverence and awe that's what the fear of the Lord is so we're not to be scared of God or afraid to come into his presence or come before him or bring our requests before him or pour out our hearts before him but we are to keep him in his rightful place and have reverence and respect for him and remember that he is an awesome God so let's walk in the fear of the Lord because that will affect all aspects of our life it will help us to live holy and righteous before him. It will help us to be obedient and faithful to him when we walk in that fear of the Lord. It's a healthy fear. It's not a negative fear. It's not an a unhealthy fear uh, that causes us anxiety. But it's a healthy fear that helps us to walk in right relationship with God and to be obedient and faithful to him and not to disobey him and not to take lightly his word and the things he says, but to remember that his word is powerful, that he is almighty God, he is powerful and that he, he is worthy of all our praise and all our worship and that he is above all things and before all things, that he is glorious and awesome. So let's walk in our fear of the Lord. The second thing I want to talk about is the favour of the Lord and in verse 12 it says this, For surely, O Lord, you will bless the righteous. You surround them with your favour as with a shield. You surround them with favour as with a shield you bless the righteous this is the the blessings of the righteous this is the blessings of people who live right with God who know Christ as their savior and being forgiven and made righteous and continue to live a righteous life and obedience and obedience to God they know the favor of God um, one definition of the favor of God in case you're wondering what, what it means to have the favor of God one definition means a demonstrated delight I like that, a demonstrated delight. It can be described as a tangible evidence that a person has the approval of the Lord. That's a description of the favour of the Lord. A tangible evidence that a person has the approval of the Lord. And so I want to encourage you to walk in the fear of God, but also to know that you can walk in the favour of God. A tangible evidence that God approves of you. A tangible evidence that God loves you. You know, in Ephesians uh, chapter 1, um, it talks about being accepted in the, in the beloved. And that word accepted means highly favoured. It's the same word that um, the, the angel Gabriel used when he addressed Mary. He says, you are highly favoured by God. And we are highly favoured, not because of her, because of us or our righteousness or what we've done, but we are highly favoured in the beloved. Who's the beloved? It's Christ. Because God loves his son and favours his son and wants to bless his son, then those who are found in him, who put their faith and trust in him, are also highly favoured. God said about his son, in you I am well pleased. And because we identify with him and his righteousness has become our righteousness, he is well pleased with us. And so we are highly favoured and we should walk in the favour of God. We should seek the favour of God. We should ask him to bless us and help us. You know, someone said that um, the favour of God is the difference between the best I can do and the best he can do. 
well, if I'm relying on what I can do in my strength, then I'm not going to succeed in fulfilling God's purposes and plan for my life. But if I'm believing for God to do it and help me and give me the power and the strength, and I believe that my life will be favoured if I'm obedient to him, then I know that I'll accomplish all things because he is with me and he will enable me and equip me. And so demonstrated delight. God delights in us, but we must delight in him. Isaiah 66 and verse 2 shows us the kind of people that God favours. It says, these are the ones I look on with favour, those who are humble and contrite in spirit, who tremble at my word. And so favour, we have to position ourselves, we have to walk a certain way, live a certain way, act a certain way to attract the favour of God. We have to have humility, there has to be contrition, there has to be this sense that we take God's word seriously, that this is not just another book but this is God's holy word to us and we should obey it and live according to it. And when we do that, humble ourselves, be contrite before God, tremble at his word, live the way he wants us to live, be obedient, then the favour of God will rest upon us. And those situations that we think we can't deal with, those circumstances we think we can't overcome, the things that rise up against us, the enemies like David is dealing with in his psalm, the enemies that rise up against him, he will have victory over and God will deliver him and protect him because he is living right and he is believing in the favour of God. So I want to encourage you at the, on this Tuesday night at Life Groups to just walk in the fear of the Lord and then you will walk in the favour of the Lord. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Let's be wise enough to know who God is and keep him in his rightful place. And then when we do that, let's expect God to bless us. I hope you have a great week. I'll see you next week as we look at uh, Psalm 6. So. Be blessed. Read this psalm for yourself. Meditate on it and may God help you to grow and may God help you to be blessed and favoured. God bless you.